There's a lot of fear when it comes to showing up on video for the first time. I know this, I felt that way too. It is a little bit scary, but there are two kinds of fear. Number one, the fear of the unknown. You don't know what's gonna happen. And number two, the fear that you're actually legitimately going to die. So just know that showing up on video is the first one. It's just uncomfortable, fear of the unknown. What if this happens? What if that happens? I promise you, nothing terrible is going to happen to you. You are safe. You are not gonna die. It's not that kind of fear. It's roller coaster scary, not monster scary. So hop on that roller coaster and get ready to go. This is gonna be fun. And I'm gonna help ease some of your fear today. In this video, I'm sharing with you this simple setup for teaching video yoga classes, whether it's on Zoom or it's pre-recorded, uploaded to YouTube or however you wanna do it. So let's talk about the elements involved. Now, before I get to the elements, just know that all of these equipment and systems and software, everything I mention, is on my website at ashesyoga.com slash tech. T-E-C-H, ashesyoga.com slash tech, where I list out links to my microphones and cameras and lights and, and scheduling and booking softwares and website stuff. Anyway, it's all there. This is just a little bit of a step-by-step um, -step so that you don't just see this long list and go, okay, what do I need? First of all, when you are doing yoga on video, you're going to need a camera. That's number one, a camera and a way to uh, collect audio and video. And usually, oftentimes, it can be the same device. It can be your phone. It can be a computer. It can be a webcam. There's a lot of options. And so I don't wanna overwhelm you with all the options. So to start, use what you have. What do you have right now? Is there a way that you can set that up to use uh, for your filming? Start with that to get comfortable on camera when it's not so perfect, and then from there, upgrade as time goes on. There's a lot of us out there who will get stuck in uh, procrastination by means of thinking that you need the perfect setup first before you get started, and that is absolutely not true. Get comfortable on camera, take some of that fear away with showing up, whether it's you know this, this kind of head talking head video or direct to camera, it's also called, or actually filming yourself uh, on camera. And maybe it's not, you're, you're not showing it to the world yet, but just get comfortable with how to speak, how to show up, how to present yourself, how to stand, posture, that kind of thing, before you make it perfect. So get out there and actually do it and tweak it as time goes on. So what are the things that we need? What about our setup? Let's talk about the overall setup. If you're doing yoga classes at home or in a studio or you've rented a space, here's a few tips for you for your setup. So I've got my setup back here and I am actually just using a corner, uh, a small corner of my yoga studio just to show you the demo. I have my yoga mat in the corner because uh, let's say I have a very small space <laughs> and I still want the depth though from the, the mat, back of the mat to the walls and I want space to be able to reach my arms and um, not bump up against the wall. Using a corner also helps to eliminate some shadows if you're bumped up right against the wall and just gives you a little bit more space. So a corner is an option. If you do have space where you can be four, six or eight feet or even more, away from a wall, yes, you can do that straight on or a straight on shot. A lot of us at home don't have that space. Or you might be forced to be bumped up against the wall. Just make sure you have a little space between your mat and the wall. So that's number one. And then you want space, of course, from your mat to your camera. And your camera, whether it's a webcam or your iPhone, is gonna be at about waist height, okay? Waist height, that's about waist height right here is gonna be a great height to allow you to look. You know, it gives you the upper and the lower portion of your body without it looking like it's going straight down on you or without it looking, you're looking like this. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you don't want to be looking down and you don't wanna be looking up. When you film, when you record, make eye contact with the camera. That's gonna be something that's tough for some people because even some people who are using a phone will look at themselves. And this right now, I'm looking at myself, 
This is not looking like I'm making eye contact with you. So make sure our eye contact is in the camera lens, okay? Camera lens eye contact. Waist height, about six to eight feet away from where you are. Now you'll have to adjust as needed where you want the camera. You can see I'm just using a chair and some yoga blocks and my computer for, um, for my setup here. This is what I prefer. I prefer using my computer with a webcam and with uh, a micro an external microphone. Again, you can start with what you have, start with your phone, and check out the audio quality as time goes on, audio and video. My number one recommendation to upgrade for the very first thing is going to be a microphone. Microphone, why, you ask? Why a microphone? Why not a better camera? Well, a better microphone is gonna allow you to be heard better, and for yoga classes, your voice is more important than what exactly you look like, than the perfection of the quality of the video. Because people aren't staring at you. They're not looking at you for high definition video. They're looking to learn internally. So they wanna hear your voice. As long as you can see your body in some shapes and you're able to give the demo of it and talk through it, if they're able to see you generally, it's good. But if they can't hear you, it's very tough to follow along in a class if they can only see you. Uh, for some people, it does. It's fine to just watch, but it's hard to watch and practice if you don't got a, if you don't have a voice to help you along. My recommendation, the one that I absolutely love, is the Rode Wireless Go, and I have plenty of videos talking about this on YouTube. Uh, there's a Rode Wireless Go original which has one microphone, and there's a Rode Wireless Go 2, which has two microphones. Now you'll see all those details over at ashesyoga.com tech. There's a few more things involved with that, so you can always reach out to me if you have questions. Otherwise, my playlist on YouTube is really helpful for all of the um, microphone setup questions, and I'm happy to send you a video if you do have those questions. Right now, I am just using the microphone attached to me here, and it's attached to my computer. Uh, I also have, or my, my camera, but I also have one attached to my computer over here. Um, I, I have both of them. I have the one and the two. I think they're both great. I love it. Uh, of course, the second one is a little, uh, it's, it's newer. So of course, if you do have the extra $100 um, to spend, I would say go with the second one. You never know when you need a second microphone. If you are doing hybrid classes, meaning in person and online, you'll probably want the second one so that you can uh, also have the music be heard at the same time. Okay, more on the Zoom setup. So external Zoom setup, meaning hardware and how you set your body. I like the mat the long way. So let's just take a step back and I'll show you. So if my camera's over here, my computer's over here, I'm gonna be mostly facing this long edge so that people can see me as I step back, as I do different poses, and I will frequently look over to the camera as if I'm talking to the people, which I am, which I'm talking to people directly. So look at the camera when I'm making eye contact, quote unquote. <laughs> and occasionally I might demo a few things and then I'll say, okay, do, an, do the other side on your own or now do your second sun salutation or, or the next two sun salutations on your own. I'm gonna come and watch you and then I'll come up uh, sitting like this and I'll observe. This is for Zoom classes, of course. If you're doing a recorded class, you might wanna demo the whole time. But this is a way that you can also observe. You can pause for a moment and say, now keep going, I'm gonna talk you through it. Do this again and repeat so I can see your form and you'd come up and check out the video. On a phone, it's gonna be a little more challenging, but still doable. On your phone, you will have to swipe over on Zoom. You can't see as many boxes. You can't see as many people. And of course, if someone doesn't have their camera on, then you can't give them feedback. I think that's a personal choice that people should be able to choose whether or not they are on camera or if they want to be or not. Just the fact that they're showing up is a big deal, is great. So you can pause and help people uh, anytime in your class. It's gonna be different than if you are in person because you are looking at a screen and more so just tweaking that way. Or even if you just say something like, 
good job, Sheila, or awesome, Janie, or I really like that foot placement, or way to reach your arms, giving encouragement in that way. So saying people's names is really nice for them. Now I'm also gonna get into how to actually use Zoom too next. So you'll see that, I'll do a screen share and you'll see that, um, but this is a setup. The last thing I ever invested in were lights, and these are softbox lights. I also have a ring light. I don't prefer the ring light because it is blinding. It's great for headshot videos like this, but it's, whoa. And so if you don't want a headache, these softbox lights are inexpensive. I got three of them for about $100, and they're great when there's not a lot of natural lighting in this space, or if I wanna film at uh, dark hours of the day. So when I'm at my apartment, I used to do 6 a.m. morning movement and meditation, I would have some lights there because it, it's dark. There's, no, not, there's not a lot of natural light at the time, even though I have a big window, not a lot of natural light, so I would um, make sure and, and turn my lights on for that class. If you are sitting here watching this like, Ashley, I don't have any space to film my yoga, or I don't have a corner like that, I'm gonna be honest and say, you have to make a corner, you have to make a space rearrange your furniture, get rid of stuff. And this excuse cannot be said anymore because we're at a point where if you wanna teach, you've gotta make it happen. You've gotta make that space in your home. You've gotta create the setup that is needed. You might even need to spend a few dollars to get a, a tripod or, um, or like I said, this microphone or something that you, if you know this is something that you are gonna be doing long-term and for the future, and this is something that you are collecting money from, so people are paying you to do, definitely invest in a few pieces that are gonna help you move forward. If you are utterly frustrated with what you have, it's a matter of investing, and it's really not that much. <laughs> I'm saying that because I own a yoga studio, and it would be amazing if all I needed was the equipment and not this giant space. It's expensive. Investing in just a few pieces is really gonna help you move forward faster. And I wanna keep helping you with that. So here's the setup. Matt's a long way. Have some space behind you, space between you and the camera. Camera's at waist height. Make sure you smile. Make sure you make eye contact with the camera itself. Wear clothes that are tight fitting so people can see your form. You don't want super baggy clothes, otherwise people might not be able to see the knee bends or what you're doing. So not ultra tight, but just tight enough that you, you can see the form in your body if someone is watching. And uh, to talk slower than you might think you want to. I'm a fast talker, and even this video, I am talking at a rate that is much slower than feels natural for me, but I know is going to be, come off a lot clearer than if I were talking at my normal rate. I'm a fast talker, you might not be, but just know that you wanna be able to articulate and say what you wanna say and get it across in a way that allows people to absorb what you're saying. So, mat, props, a camera, a microphone, good lighting or decent enough lighting, and you're good to go. Remember, you're going to do this without perfection, not being perfect. You're going to get started not get it absolutely right and perfect, but get started and then keep going. As time goes on, you'll know when it's time to uh, upgrade and upgrade in time rather than all at once. You don't need all the pieces, but all the pieces are listed at ashesyoga.com slash tech. That's where you can find them. And when you have questions, just come to me and I'm happy to answer them. Now let's get to actual Zoom on Zoom and talk about how to set up there. You can now see that I am on my computer or where I would be filming from Zoom. So just check out what it looks like. This is where I could teach a yoga class. I've got my microphone, I've got my camera, and I'm recording. So it's great. This could be a great Zoom setup. And a couple other things I forgot to mention in that last video is make sure that you have a clock somewhere or you're able to read the time someplace that's not your computer or not your phone. When you're on Zoom on your phone, you can't see the time. You can't check the time that way. So have something external like a clock 
preferably a digital clock that you can track your time. You wanna make sure that doesn't click a bunch, an analog clock doing lots of ticking. I had one of those ones, I had to throw it out. So a clock that you can tell the time, make sure you've got water next to you. And um, also any, uh, any charging devices or charging cables. Make sure all of your devices prior to hitting the go live button are charged up. So you have your computer charged, your phone charged, your microphone charged. And if you don't have it charged, you have at least an outlet that's close enough that you're able to charge it at the same time. So worst thing that could happen is that your battery dies on something and then uh, the tech kind of flops on you. So make sure that everything is charged overnight, ready to go. Okay, clock charging, now let's talk about Zoom. So let's get on over here. And Zoom is a webinar broadcasting type software. It is internet based, so you do need the internet, although you can record on Zoom. If you just wanna record your screen or you wanna record yourself, you can record from Zoom. Zoom's quality, as far as recording goes, isn't amazing. It's not gonna be high definition, even if you have the best of the best cameras, it's just Zoom. It compresses the video to be a smaller size. So the recordings will be smaller. I'll tell you a few tips on that too in a moment, but you would go to zoom.us and register or not register <laughs> or to sign up. You can check out the plans and pricing over at the plans and pricing um, page. There's a free, a free plan that you can use. You can only go live for up to 40 minutes with a certain amount of people and they do have limitations. So you can't connect it to uh, any other external software, or anything like that, but it does give you uh, some time to play with it. So when you are ready to make the purchase, I would go with the basic. You don't need anything more than basic. Uh, you don't need a business one, just basic $14.99 a month is all you need. So go for the $15 a month. Zoom is a the number one software I would say you need to start an online yoga business where you are teaching, whether it's streaming or recording, definitely get Zoom. Uh, the people attending do not have to pay this fee. It's just you, the person that's hosting the meeting. And when I say meeting, it's actually a yoga class or an event or whatever else you're on live for. That's your meeting. So when I log into Zoom, there's a lot of options and I'm not gonna go through every single one of them, but the options, if you look on this left side, you can change your profile, meeting, so you can actually schedule a meeting from the internet, the from the website. So if you are having trouble with the apps or with your phone and you wanna do it from your computer, you can go ahead and even log in at zoom.us, log into your account. Another way is uh, you can download the Chrome extension right here. So you can log in using the Chrome extension if, you have, if you're using Google Chrome. I also have it on the top of my, you can't see it right now, I don't think, but the top of my bar on my Mac computer, it's also an extension um, up at the top. I also have it downloaded as an app on my computer and as my phone. Uh, and on my phone, so it's downloaded as an app, it's uh, available online, so it really just tries to make it as easy as possible. If you wanna schedule an upcoming class or meeting, you could schedule a meeting from right away from your, uh, from your, Zoom, uh, from your Zoom account. So topic, meeting, what time, time zone, uh, if you want a passcode or not, you would have to give this to people to join. I usually take that off both for really for any classes because um, now they don't have the option for people to just join and you not admit them somehow. So I keep them in the waiting room. I would rather just admit people in the waiting room and I'll talk about the difference of that actually right now. So in the waiting room, people will join using your link and they get put in a waiting room until you admit them. If you use a passcode instead, of a waiting room, then they can join without you admitting them. And maybe your passcode is yoga, right? Yoga or something like that. It doesn't have to be numbers. It can be a word too, but it has to be one or the other. You must select one of them. So I usually do waiting room. The, the positive to having a passcode is that if someone joins late, you don't have to get up to admit them in. So passcode would be great for hybrid classes or classes where you don't wanna constantly check your computer. If someone gets booted off, 
then you have to readmit them if you're in the waiting room only. A passcode would be nice. If the password stays the same the entire time um, and you don't want to constantly have to admit people, but just make sure that they know what the passcode is. Make it something very obvious. Okay, that's up to you. I turn this on. It's up to you if you want this on or off. I would say on just because initially I want people's on um, and then have them choose if they want them on or off. And, and then just going through a few other options, you can automatically record the meeting so that uh, you don't have to hit the record button or forget. Uh, I like to actually hit the record button because you have the choice between recording from to your computer itself or to the Zoom cloud, which shows up here in this website. So uh, I don't click this on, I will record um, once we get started. And muting participants on entry, that's up to you too. That means they can't say anything or they're not gonna be loud or fumbling around as you're teaching. I do like to keep people muted unless it's at the very beginning or the very end of the practice where you're having conversations. If it's a one-on-one, -on -one, that's a little different. Okay, so you can schedule a meeting here. Um, you can schedule, uh, check out your recordings here in this recordings place. So cloud recordings or local recordings, these will be on your computer. I don't have any cloud recordings right now. You are limited to how many. You're limited, I think, to a gigabyte or less, a couple. You're limited to how big or how many you can have. So you can't have tons and tons of recordings listed here. Maybe if you do hour long Zooms, you might be able to do three or four recordings before you have to delete them. So download them, save them on your computer or on a hard drive, and then, um, and then delete them from this, this place. There's a ton of settings I don't wanna necessarily get into, but I would recommend reading through a lot of these. If you want the waiting room on or passcodes or uh, any number of things, this is a very long page to scroll down and, um, and check out all the, the settings. So keep scrolling, keep scrolling. So check out all of these in the meetings, in the settings for meetings. You can even do settings for the recording. And this is also where you can maybe enhance the quality a little bit. You can eliminate some echo. This is gonna be for every, every Zoom you have, even from a phone. So you can't change the settings from your phone, but you can change them on your computer. So um, check out all of these, right? Check out all of them. Oh, I don't want this one. So this is a voice prompt uh, recording. It says, this meeting is being recorded. Um, that just started recently. I don't like it, so I'm turning that off. Uh, you And every time you see something that you'd like to change um, in your Zoom, on Zoom, or if something happens that you're like, I don't like that, it's likely you can go to this computer or to the internet, zoom.us, log in, and change the settings. I wanted to take this minute to talk a little bit about Offering Tree, which is the scheduling and booking software that I recently switched to and I absolutely love. So I want to show you what Offering Tree is and how it works and how it integrates with Zoom to help you streamline the process of people scheduling your classes. So Offering Tree is an all-in-one. You can see my website right here. I've got my offerings listed, a schedule. If you go to my schedule, people can book my morning movement and meditation class, register for it. It can be, um, they can pay me or join for free. I've set whatever price I want. And then when they register, they get an automatic email that gives them the Zoom link. So let's go ahead and check out the back end and how that all works just to make sure that it, you know how simple it is. So with Offering Tree, I easily set up my website within a half hour and I added my offerings. And the offerings can be group classes, private lessons, coaching calls, all sorts of different things. Even if you have a workshop or a retreat, you can add them as offerings. And once you add an offering, offering, you then schedule it. So let's just say we're going to schedule this beginner yoga. I want to do it as a one-time event just to give you an example. I'm not going to go through all the details, because I do have additional tutorials on these and they also walk you through the process. But how you would create or connect it to Zoom is to click right here where it says online event. 
you can automatically generate a meeting with Zoom. So when someone books this, it'll automatically do it. So you don't have to do it yourself manually, which is amazing and saved so much time. So it'll ask you to sign in. And right now I'm already signed into my account. So it's just going to pop in like, awesome. If I want to link to another Zoom account, I can. If you already have a meeting generated, and you have the link, whether it's on Zoom or someplace else, you would then put the online link here. Perhaps you scheduled a Facebook Live or you use a, a Google application. You can add your own link. And then right here, you'll just say like join the class or join Zoom meeting. And that's all I do. So it'll automatically create a new Zoom link for each class once someone signs up the first time. And then we can hit done and go through the process of doing the rest of the setup. And as soon as you do that, that means with pe when people register for the class, they then get an automatic confirmation email that has a Zoom link at the bottom so you don't have to worry about it. So that's how I easily streamline the process with my Zoom group yoga classes and also with any coaching calls or if I do any one-on-ones, I just set it up in my system. People book me and then it pops up on my Zoom application um, and I check every morning to see if someone has booked with me. And I set even set the parameters that people can't book within 24 hours so that I know each day that's what my schedule is. And I can just go to Zoom and it shows me when I have calls. So that's kind of cool, right? So check out Offering Tree and you can get a discount 50% off your first three months by going to offeringtree.com slash ashes. So I am a partner or affiliate with Offering Tree and I love them. I've been talking about it a ton. So if you are doing Zoom classes or anything, even even live and in-person classes, not just Zoom, but if you are scheduling classes and you don't want to always have to deal with that email back and forth and giving passwords and making Zoom, new Zoom links, I highly recommend Offering Tree. So go and check it out, offeringtree.com slash ashes. It makes the website building process very simple and it's a great all-in-one for those of you who are just getting started or even if you're like me you're not just getting started but you want a simpler way to do all this online tech stuff so check it out well, zoom shows up as an application and i want to show you this too this is actually where i go a lot of times on my computer so zoom as the application i've got some different chats and things I've got um, different meetings, but let's say we actually go in and start our class. I'm just gonna click on this one, and this is us starting class. So from my computer, I would start from your phone, you head to the meetings portion. So there's home, chat, meetings. You go to the meetings section, click on what you want to start, and you hit start. Now I'm going to share with you the actual Zoom screen, that one the Zoom screen that popped up. Zoom screen popping up, good. And I'm gonna add myself, actually, I'm gonna make sure it's just Zoom here. I'm gonna add myself on my phone. So this is a Zoom screen. There's a few things I need to start. Um, I'm gonna add my phone so you see a double. Yep, you see double. No audio. Because I've got two, ooh, because I've got two screens going on, we're just gonna put that one over there. That's my phone. Um, because I've got two, two screens, like if you wanted to use two different cameras, uh, you wanna turn the audio off of one of them because otherwise it's gonna be a, a really large echo. So let's say I've got this one over here. Uh, that's someone who's joining for class. It's just a, another window. So I'm the teacher, I'm right here. I've got someone in class or that's my private client. Let's go down to these buttons. And this is where you're gonna change your settings for your camera or your, your uh, microphone. So if you've got a microphone and a camera, you'll go to this bottom button where it says mute. If you hit the mute button, people will no longer be able to hear you. You are now muted, now I'm unmuted. If I hit the arrow, this is where I'm going to change. Did that show up? It doesn't show up, oh no, you can't see it. I got it, okay, so I'm just gonna say what it is. If I hit this arrow button, a little pop-up shows up that says select microphone and select speaker. For my uh, microphone that's connected through USB, I'm going to choose USB microphone or the USB audio device. For the speaker, I want it to be the built-in speaker on my computer. So I want them to be separate. 
if you choose the speaker as the microphone, you're not gonna hear anything because a microphone is not a speaker, it's only a microphone. So your microphone and speaker are set differently, okay? Differently. And that's at the bottom here, this little arrow, if you hit the arrow, it pops up. You will see options to select your microphone and to select your speaker. You'll wanna do that as soon as you get on so that you don't forget and you find that you're you're wearing this microphone and it's not even attached and it's you know different audio picking up. So you'll want the, um, the, to change your microphone. For your camera, if your camera is showing something else, you'll go to the, the video, stop video, this little arrow down here, and a little pop-up's gonna show up that says select a camera. And you'll choose Logitech C920 or Logitech Brio or FaceTime HD camera, whatever camera you have plugged in that you wanna use. So I click on it and I click, I check Logitech Brio. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Now let's talk about quick how to add music to your classes through Zoom. Go to this share screen button. This is a big green one, share screen. So if you're doing a presentation that involves slideshows, this is how you're gonna share your screen uh, anyway. So a pop-up's gonna show up. Again, it's not showing up, but a pop-up will show up. And you have options at the very top after you hit share screen, options at the very top, it says basic, advanced, and files. If you click advanced, and then music or computer sound only, then you can share computer sound. Now, you'll have to play with the volume, but basically, let me walk you through it again. You hit the share screen button, go to the very top and click advanced, and then choose music or computer sound only and then you can share the sound of Spotify or the sound of iTunes, um, and you can still, people can still hear you. You wanna adjust the volume settings on both of those, of course, just to know that the music is a certain level, ask your students if it sounds okay. The thing you don't wanna do is try to play music into your microphone from the background at the same time. It, it comes off really choppy and there is noise cancellation that Zoom does and the microphones, so that gets really choppy. So what happens is people will hear the music in the background when you're not talking, and then when you're talking, the music cuts out. And it's really weird, and it doesn't sound great. So if you're going to share music, do it from, um, do it from the share screen button, okay? And go to advanced, and you'll hit computer sound only. If I widen it, you can see there's a record button. Record, you have the choice between recording to the computer or recording to the cloud. I choose my computer always because it does make the quality a little bit better. I like the chat box. Does the chat box show up here? Yep, chat box, chat box. Hey everyone. This is where you can welcome people. Also know that when you do uh, chat on Zoom, if people join late, they don't see everything from the past. So if you say, hey everyone, and someone pops on, they're not going to see the hey everyone. So you have to say it again. So this is a place where people can chat. Uh, participate, participants. This is how you're gonna mute everybody. But right before you start your class, if you're having a conversation, you're talking, you're having a good time, hey everyone, how's it going? What's, how's life? Then you go into participants, participants, and mute all. Boom. And you can choose whether or not to allow them to unmute themselves but you hit the mute all button and the other ones will be muted. You cannot unmute people. I think that would be really weird if you personally were able to unmute somebody and let's say like their, their screen's off, maybe they're in the bathroom, I don't know. Um, but you cannot unmute people. You have to request that they unmute themselves. So once you mute people, they have to mute, unmute, okay? Uh, there's also some more options here with muting. This is in participants. You can invite people. If someone's not there, you're like, oh no, they need the link. Hit the invite button and a pop-up shows up to invite people. If you hit the mute but mute, the more button, there are some more options with sounds and muting upon entry and that kind of stuff. So play with all that. One more thing I just noticed. My camera actually isn't picking up the full version just because it's not on HD. So I'm gonna go over to this video portion and click settings. So there's a place for video settings. You can't see that pop up, but I'm gonna turn on the HD, 
H D high definition much better. <laughs> so when I turn on HD, I'll need good Wi-Fi for that for one, but also it makes your screen bigger. No matter what camera you're using, when you turn on HD on your computer, bigger, more. Uh, if you're not HD, it's gonna crop it a bit. So now I'm HD. Another thing I will wanna do is to turn the view to speaker and pin myself. Pin if you have two people, you can also spotlight if you have more than one. So pin means that I'm going to show up in the recording only and I'm gonna show up first if you're in speaker view. If you have it as gallery view, it might record everybody, it likely will. So keep it in speaker view. You can still see people at the top, awesome. That's great, you can still see them up there. Um, it's just you wanna be able to pin or spotlight yourself, right? You can remove the pin if you want. Boop, but I'm gonna keep the pin on there. Pin the video so that I'm the only one. There is an option to mirror your video in video settings. Mirror is off. This is my right hand. It looks awkward to me. It's not, it doesn't look like I'm looking at myself. If I turn the mirror on again, now it looks like a mirror in the screen. So you can choose this on or off, it's up to you. But no, please know that it does not change for the person viewing. It doesn't change for your students. So if you have the mirror on and you think, oh, well now I don't have to mirror or I don't have to mix up my lefts and rights because it will look like I'm using my right. That's not true. What the people see is they see you as if you are sitting in front of them. So think of it in a way that, that you're in a yoga class and people are right in front of you and you are looking at them. If you say, lift your right arm, they're likely going to lift their left because it's mirroring um, the back and forth. So that's a little challenging for some people, but with the settings on Zoom, it doesn't flip for the students. So you can't make it easier on yourself. You have to act as if they're sitting or watching you right in front of you. So if you have a t-shirt that says something, it's likely that you personally would read it, be reading it backwards because the, it's being mirrored. But if you have, uh, but the people watching you, they'd be able to read your shirt or read whatever you hold up. So if you hold something up that has words on it, they see it in the correct way, whether or not you have mirror turned on or off. Okay, now let's get to it. So you've set the microphone, you've set the camera, you've set the pin and the spotlight, you have the view set to speaker. You have muted everybody for class. Now, and you hit record, so record. You said your intro. Okay, now we are going to start our class. Let's, those are all the steps. Start your class and, and get going. So we go. You might have set music. You're gonna teach. You're gonna tell them how awesome Warrior Two is. <laughs> and they're gonna follow along with you. You might have a meditation or shavasana. And then thank you so much for coming to our practice. I really enjoyed having you. Have a wonderful day. And then you do the awkward scooch up to your computer. Say goodbye to everyone and end it. So I'm gonna hit end button. End, end meeting for all. So that was the behind the scenes of Zoom. I hope that was helpful, a little run through of how you would set yourself up and then how you would actually go to Zoom. In time, you're gonna make adjustments. Don't worry about it. Again, this is a fear of the unknown style of scariness, but it, nothing terrible is going to happen. Nothing awful, it's not, it's not a thing. It's, it's just a little bit different than what you're used to. So. Keep playing with it, keep uh, enjoying the process and coming back for questions when you have any. I am happy to help you out and I hope to talk to you and see you again in more of the upcoming trainings. All right, bye.